Hey, what's up, everybody? BDO44 coming at you with another video. All right, so it is that time. To talk about a little basketball. Of course, the NBA has given us a trade of some sort, and I wrote it in very light pink pen. So I don't think I can read this, but I think I know what it is anyway. Um, first of all, you got a three team deal between the Spurs, the Mavericks, and the Boston Celtics. And Grant Williams is going to be the guy on the move to the Dallas Mavericks as they do a sign and trade there, sending him to the Mavericks. The Mavericks will be getting uh, just him on a four-year, $53 million contract, uh, which is $13 million a year for Grant Williams. The Celtics receive themselves three second rounders. And from what I understand, some type of pick swap is going to be swapped around in this as well. I think the Celtics receive a pick swap from 2030 or something like that. I don't remember where that pick swap is going. Either the Celtics or the Spurs. I don't remember. But the Spurs are getting Reggie Bullock. One year, $10 million expiring contract. I believe that's expiring right now. $10 million according to the trade tracker on E. I mean the trade machine on ESPN. Who, while I was literally looking at the framework on the deal... They made this switch on the app while I was looking at it. Grant Williams went from Dallas to Boston, uh, for Boston to Dallas, rather, while, right before my very eyes. On the trade machine, so that was kind of cool. Never seen that happen before. But nevertheless, um, yeah, Grant Williams is going to be starting. No, I don't know if he's starting, but he's definitely going to be a big, huge piece of the Dallas Mavericks. And I'm going to tell you the truth. I love it. I love it. I'm not. I'm not overly thrilled with granted 13 a year because i don't know that he's proven he's a 13 a year guy based on last year the year before that yes the duration of his time with the celtics i would say so and we talked about grant williams a great deal we scouted him not necessarily scouted him i think he i think i actually did homework on here a year after he was drafted that was two summers ago when i literally looked at every single player on every single team and scouted everybody young on every team and at the time i think he was a two-year pro or something like that we talked a lot about his game because he was scouted. If you look at some of his draft um, videos, some of the stuff from Grant Williams, you'll see that uh, essentially his game was 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 outdated for the NBA. He was a back-to-the-basket player, iffy on defense, couldn't stretch the floor, looked to turn over his shoulder and shoot the rock 100 times from the, from the post. Just an outdated game entirely. But that's not who he ended up showing himself to be in Boston. That's not who he developed into. And as long as Umi Udoka had a hold of him, uh, Grant Williams was an elite playoff performer who could play on both sides of the floor at an elite level. Uh, shoot the ball. I never forget the game. I think it was game seven against the Bucks. We had like seven or eight threes in a game seven against the Bucks. Um, and, and it's just one of those situations where he solidified himself as a playoff performer that day. Um, last year didn't have the greatest role under um, uh, Missoula. Missoula ball was not necessarily his game. <laughs> And to be honest with you, uh, I, I'm glad that he's leaving Dallas. I mean, leaving Boston and going to Dallas where Dallas literally needs what he does. Dallas's problem last year is they had all the offensive uh, talent in the world with Kyrie, Luka, uh, James, uh, what's his name? Not James, uh, Tim Hardaway, various different dudes, Hardy and Green. But they couldn't defend anybody as a team. You bring in the people that they've brought in right now, and you're significantly better. They draft Omax Prosper. They drafted Lively. They brought in Rashad Holmes. And now they bring in Grant Williams. I would argue those are four good defenders. I'm not so sure about Rashad Holmes defensively. I'm just not knowledgeable. But those are the three. They're down to play defense. They're, they're down there for that. Lively's one of the best shot blockers in the draft. You know what I mean? Omax Prosper is one of the best on-ball defenders, big body defenders out there in the draft as well. And then when you consider Grant Williams, that's what he does. That's where he's going to shine the most on the defensive end. So for me, I think the Dallas Mavericks vault themselves into top three teams that had the best free agency this offseason. When I look at the Lakers, I look at the Suns, and I look now at the Mavericks. Those are the teams that have impressed me the most. After getting this deal for the Mavericks, yeah, man, yeah. <clears throat> These are the type of things that we were talking about them doing yesterday. Yesterday, if y'all watched my video, one of them Laker video, one of those uh, NBA chat videos I did, we talked about the Dallas Mavericks and some of the things that I would do with the Dallas Mavericks. And one of the main things I said is I'm going to upgrade Reggie Bullock because I don't need him on my contract no more. And I was saying to you guys that I think I would rather 
move on from Tim Hardaway as well, but I think I need his piece. I think I need what he does. So I'm not quite sure I'm, I'm really going to get rid of him and upgrade. But Reggie Bullock, man, I can upgrade Reggie Bullock right now. And that's exactly what they did. It was as if they saw my video and it proceeded to say, yep, we're going we to do that. Probably had something on the table for Reggie Bullock at that moment uh, for Grant Williams. And, and that's what they did. They did what I said I would do just 24 hours ago, which is trade Reggie Bullock for something and bring back a player that can upgrade from that position. That's what Grant Williams is. I don't think Grant Williams is going to be a steady shooter like Reggie Bullock. Because Reggie Bullock is a guy who profiles as a good shooter. But Reggie Bullock don't be hitting threes like that. <laughs> I mean, he's like a shooter who can't shoot. We talk about these type of guys who profile as shooters who've hit big shots. But when you need consistency and you're looking for someone who can shoot, you're going to go to them and they're going to break the shot. It's a couple of them. Him, Max Struess, a couple of guys. That just, they're shooters. But damn it, if you think you can rely upon them, you can't. That's Reggie Bullock for you. And then on the other side, Reggie Bullock's supposed to profile as a fantastic defender. But he ain't, he ain't really, you know what I mean? It ain't really translating to him locking nobody up like that. He's just an average player at this stage in his career, aging a little bit. Can hit a couple shots, but you don't want you don't want him in the role that Dallas had him in. You needed him upgraded. And so that's what they did. They brought in somebody better. Grant Williams is better. However, is he at a better price versus the price that Reggie would have been at? I don't think so necessarily. Then again, it's only four more million dollars. So I think it balances itself out even. Sort of like Dennis Schroeder and Gabe Vincent. It's like, yeah, you're stepping down from Dennis Schroeder to Gabe Vincent, but not as it pertains to the relative price. When you consider Schroeder went for $14 million, you used to having him at two. You know what I mean? And, and, and Gabe comes in at 11 or something like that. So, you know, it balances itself out. I think this kind of does the same thing. If Grant Williams has a bad season, you don't love him at $13 million. But for what the Dallas Mavericks need, when considering one of their best defenses is players is Omax and Lively and you don't want them guys being your defensive uh, spearheads in a win now situation you need a guy like Grant Williams coming to be the quarterback a guy who's been there before you know what I mean just like your team uh, has aspirations of winning look at the Don's been to the Western Conference Finals you want somebody obviously Kyrie Irving won a championship with the Cleveland Cavaliers you want other people on that team who've been there done that <clears throat> you can do it again so it's a good time to invest in Grant Williams. I don't think he's that old, probably like 25, something like that, 26. We've seen good out of him, and we also know that he didn't get as many minutes last year, which means he's fresher. He's fresher than normal, and he's going to get a good run this year with the Dallas Mavericks in the event that everything goes right, which I don't imagine it won't. Uh, I, I don't imagine it won't. Uh, Grant Williams is exactly what they need. You're going to have Omax Prosper down there with him, and they're going to be locking people up. They're going to be moving people around. Now, the next thing I want the Dallas Mavericks to do, now, I don't, I don't know if they can do this. <clears throat> I don't know if this is possible. But my dream scenario for the Dallas Mavericks is now to reacquire Dorian Finney-Smith. Bring him back if you can. I don't care necessarily the price tag going out. If it has to be another second-round pick or two, maybe even three, I might be willing to bring back Dorian Finney-Smith to the Dallas Mavericks to add him to Grant Williams, to Omax, to Lively, I like that. I like that a lot because I never thought Dorian Finney-Smith was somebody the Dallas Mavericks should have ever let go. The only reason why they did that is to bring in Kyrie Irving. They re-signed Kyrie Irving, so that's a good thing. Everything worked out. However, Grant Williams is a nice addition, but there's a chance Grant Williams doesn't play well. There's a chance Omax don't ain't prosperous in the first season. There's a chance that Lively don't really show too much liveliness in the first season. Do you understand what I'm saying? You don't want to rely on him too much. And you bring back Dorian Finney-Smith, the guy who's supposed to be in that situation, who never should have been leaving Dallas in the first place, now you got what I consider a full contender. As Kyrie Irving and, and Luka Dodon got the shooting, Tim Hardaway, they got the shooting. Green and Hardy are going to help with the scoring. Them dudes, they're scorers. I don't need too much on the offensive end. I just need interior presence. I probably got that. And I also need... <clears throat> I also need... A bit more defensive pressure on the perimeter, which Omax, Grant, and if my vision falls in place, Dorian Finney-Smith should be able to come back in and do that. Then I can look Luka, Don, Luka the Don in the eye and say, now it's on you to go get it. Now it's on you to be better than the field. But until, for my vision, they get that piece, they're still not quite where they want to be. But they're certainly getting there. They're certainly getting there. And Grant Williams at that investment is a good thing for four years. It's a good thing. I think it's more likely that he plays up to 13 every year than down. 
from that, from here, for them, with their needs. So, this is good. This is good. <clears throat> for San Antonio, getting a Reggie Bullock, expiring contract, $10 million comes off of the books next summer. Or they can trade it uh, at the deadline and, and have that freed up for them. Uh, never a bad thing for San Antonio to, to free up cap space. Um, because they have Web Banyama and you don't really know what you're... Ex you don't want to not have an immense amount of flexibility around that player. Because it, it, it comes down this t to this for me. San Antonio is in a very advantageous position as it pertains to how much they have as a team. It's not like Miami who has to give up players they don't want to give up in order to make things happen for themselves. They don't have that problem. If Webb Banyama would have found himself on one of those teams that didn't have no flexibility, you would likely see a situation where Webb Banyama would be stuck with whatever they build, and he would probably want to get the hell up out of there because they couldn't build what it is they need to build. San Antonio don't have that problem at all. The flexibility they have is only becoming more and more you know, flexible because they have so much in regards to picks. Players haven't really been signed to nothing big, no major contracts on there. It's Web Banyama and a couple of people they've drafted over the last several years. That's really all they have with, with a bunch of picks, which is the bulk of what their value is, which is a very good thing when you're rebuilding. Picks from, from here to 2030, they got them all. So keep that. Get your Reggie Bullock, have him come off the books. Next year, year after that, depending on how you handle your flexibility, you'll be able to build or tear down whatever necessary to keep Webanyama happy. That's really what it comes down to. Because of that flexibility, because of what it is they're continuing to create in the form of flexibility, whoever rises to the top, if, top rather, if they're young players, like Wesley starts playing well, Sohan starts playing well, one of them dudes become a $206 million guy, you have the money to make sure that he has his running mate. If for some reason one of those guys develop into that. Devin Vassell, you want these guys' money. Melakai, Branham, you want these guys' money in place. So I think that the San Antonio Spurs are kind of putting themselves in a position to be as flexible as possible so they don't have any issues whatsoever in building around with Banyama. And, you know, I'm one of those people that think they should bring Dame uh, to San Antonio, but I also see the fruit in absolutely not for this reason. Keeping that flexibility in place and making damn sure that you don't bring anything to Web Panyama that you can't move. That's what it really comes down to. You, you want to keep that kid? You want to keep anybody of that caliber? Flexibility is your only real way. And if those guys want you to get rid of your flexibility, then in my humble opinion, they're probably the wrong star. That's the era we're in at this point. That's, that's where we're at. <laughs> If you're a star that wants me to build something that doesn't allow you to be a champion, you're the wrong guy for me. <laughs> okay, that's what we need to start looking at people at this point. Uh, so, like I said, Dame is on, on a hell-bent mission to get to Miami. I think it's misguided. I think it's a mistake, and I don't think it's going to end. It's, it's not going to end the way he wants it to. The city is beautiful, but the team doesn't have flexibility to create anything real around him. And so the first thing they're going to need to trade when he gets there in order to become flexible is him. And so that's why I'm, I've been telling everybody who watches me that Dame should really expand that list to a team like Utah, like San Antonio, like the Celtics, like the Knicks, who have picks who can afford to make a trade for him without being depleted in doing so. That's the only thing he should really want. It's the only thing he should really want. Otherwise, he should want retirement because ain't nothing. It, you're not your career ain't going to be worth playing in, in Miami. You're going to wake up and you're going to hate coming to work every day because they're not going to have nothing other than you. Now, some. The argument for Miami, and this is a very good one, is that they keep finding players out of nowhere. Caleb Martin comes out of nowhere. Gabe Vincent came out of nowhere. Max Struess developed out of nowhere. They find fortuitous opportunities to make that Duncan Robinson contract over the last four years not tank their team. They've been successful with that contract on the books, which seems impossible on paper. But like I always often say, the best way to build is to make sure you're getting players out of nowhere and finding stuff out of nothing, something out of nothing. And that's what the Miami Heat have, have done. They found a bunch, as I've said. So maybe you argue they're going to do that again. Maybe I argue that that's okay to think that, but the likelihood of them being able to hit on every one of them dudes just like they did in these last era, especially in the first season, you, you're waiting for Orlando Robinson to turn into Max Struess in, in year one. You know, in the first year he gets a real role, you're expecting uh, – Nikola Jovic to, to turn into Gabe Vincent 
His first year with a real role, fresh off injury. I just know better. Jaime Hawkins is supposed to come in and be uh, Paul Pierce or something. I know better, man. This is not that. They're going to need time to put that kind of talent together if they're going to find it out of nowhere. And then they need to get lucky and have that talent be successful. You don't have time for that if you're Dan Lillard. You don't have time for it. And look, maybe his agents have told him that he can make a billion dollars if he finishes his career with the Miami Heat. See, this is the type of crap that'll make you go to a bad situation. Because you listen to people who have money in mind telling you you can make money here. But you're not going to have the same reputation once you go to Miami from Portland. Now that people have seen you basically not make it all the way through the Portland era with all that his brand is meant to be. Him going to Miami just to move again in six months. It's a terrible look for the brand of Dame Lillard. And so that's what I'm looking at. It's like, yo, you're going to go to Miami, but you ain't going to sit down. The likelihood that you stay there is extremely slim because they just don't have nothing else worth keeping other than moving you to get that thing they need to want to keep. Jimmy Butler, in my opinion, I move on from Jimmy. Now that his team has been dis disintegrated around him, Jimmy's a guy who's on a timeline that don't fit the team he's on. You know what I mean? Bam out of bio, him and Dame Lillard, that, that's, that could be a super team if you pull it off. If you don't pull it off, Jimmy's in the same situation Dame's in. <laughs> in the sense that he's on a team that can't do nothing for him, although he don't have a successor in the way. I can argue that I'm going to put the ball in Jaime Hawkins' heads, hands and hopes he does become the successor to, to Jimmy Butler. I'm, I can argue that's exactly what they're hoping they'll have. So... I'm not saying I'm moving on from Miami if I'm Jimmy because Bam is still there. And as long as I have those two, they've proven they can get to the Eastern Conference Finals with, with me and, and your friends over there. Like, they, they find a way. The problem is, and the problem is, you got to assume good luck overnight, as I've already said. And if that's what you're assuming with the Miami Heat, your odds don't look as good to succeed there as it does to succeed pretty much everywhere else if you're Dame Lillard. <laughs> So if you're Dame and you just have to live in Miami, then I think the best course of action is retirement. Serious, man. I am serious. It's nothing worse than hating what you do when you go to work. And he ain't he ain't never experienced that, in my humble opinion. I don't think so. Just as a matter of fact, he's been in Portland and has been enjoying it. I don't think he's ready for what comes with going to another team when you don't have that leverage. When you didn't force your way there and leaving everybody with a bad taste in their mouth and route. Dane don't know that world. He don't know a world where people don't respect him for his word. I just don't know why he would want to go down this path, forcing his way out of Portland to a place where people going to dislike that he did that. I just don't know why he wants to sign up for that. You know what I mean? Especially, and this is another thing I got to say in regards to that. You spent your whole year in Portland, your whole career in Portland, bro. You can't, you can't move to another small market and finish it off. Like, you don't even really want to leave Portland. So why is it a must that you go to lavish Miami? Why can't you just slide from one random place with a bunch of trees to another place with a bunch of trees like Utah or something? <laughs> I don't understand it. I don't get it. It's not like this guy is used to the plush life. He ain't. I think he... I just think he'd be watching other people's careers, bro. I, I ain't gonna lie to you. I just think he watch other people's careers. They're like, yo, Jimmy's having a good time out there. <laughs> Bron had an amazing time out there. I'm probably gonna have a great time out there. It's like, bro, they don't have the same stuff. And it's because of the LeBron era that they still playing from behind the eight ball after that. God knows how many bad contracts they signed up there. Duncan Robinson. Um, what's his name? Old dude that then moved on from the team. But, um, Hassan Whiteside, old trash contract. Chris Bosh's albatross of a contract. They never recovered from any of that. They never recovered. As soon as they got a chance to recover, they giving money away to people they ain't got no business. Consecutive horrible contracts in a row. And still on that Duncan Robinson contract, why would a savvy player who knows what's up choose Miami? <laughs> That's my question. It just seems, it just doesn't look like Dame's really in the know, man. It looks like he's flying blind with a lot of confidence. I want to go there. I'm like, bro, but that is the worst place to go. You can't think of nowhere else in this league you want to be. It's like, no, nah, I want to go over there. It's like, but they have nothing at all, Dame Willard. They ain't gonna have, they're going to have even less when you get there. So I, I just, I'm trying to plead to the man if he's hearing me. Just like I tried to plead to the Houston Rockets not to tear down the young players. 
trying to help these teams, man. Dallas seemed to be paying attention to me. I don't know. I'm telling myself that anyway. But Dallas is seeming to do the right thing right after I say it. Game Lillard need to do the right thing after I say it, bro. Go to the Mavericks, or rather Utah, San Antonio, Boston, New York. Teams with assets, bro. Teams with assets. Orlando. You know what I'm saying? Teams that got something to let that you can fall back on with that $64 million contract. Some type of cushion to absorb that. Without it being the only thing on the books, bro. Uh, God, those are the teams you want to go to. OKC, it's a great one. Hell, look at what what the what the uh, what the Pacers are putting together. Look at what the Pacers are putting together. They putting together all kinds of stuff. They're aggressive. Don't nobody want to go up there and play with them. But you could probably go there and win a ring. Be just as big of a legend there as you were in Portland. But guys don't want to do stuff that gives them a path that allows them to live in a way they don't want to live. You know what I mean? And that's fine because I'm the same way, but I'm also not half a billion dollars in to create whatever I want to anywhere I go. You give me $500,000, I can make I can make Indiana a good place for me to live. You know what I'm saying? So I just think, I truly think that Dame is looking at it the, uh, the wrong way. And if you want to retire and go to Miami, you got to retire first, then go to Miami. It's the only way it's going to work in 2023, bro. Otherwise, you're about to go there and that team's not going to be very good. You know, they're just not going to be very good. Not that first year, not that second year, not the third year. They don't have the assets to get better until they trade you to do that. And that's what he's going to find out from year in to year out. They just ain't going to get better. He's going to see it, too. He's going to be like, damn, I'm still playing with these type of guys? Second year? Damn. Third year, y'all didn't do any better in the draft? No, they didn't. No, fam. $64 million a you is why. <laughs> they have no flexibility to get nothing. And so, again... He should want something else. And now, I should want something else too. Because the Lakers Summer League game versus the San Antonio Spurs is about to start right now. So that's pretty much what I got to say, man. I encourage everybody to go check that out. Summer League action is fun. No Web Banyama. His first game, I think, is on Thursday. Um, so, yeah, I'm, I'm looking forward to seeing my guys. And I'll come back to you guys with that. But for now, this is BDF44 signing off. Peace.